most of all of the Earth's energy inputs come from the Sun. Not all of the sunlight that strikes the top of the atmosphere is converted into energy at the surface of the Earth. The solar energy to the Earth refers to the energy that hits the surface of Earth itself. The amount of the energy that reaches the Earth provides a useful understanding of energy for the Earth as a system. Remember that? This energy goes toward weather, keeping the temperature of our planet a suitable level for life and powers the entire biosphere. Additionally, the solar energy can be used for solar power, either with solar thermal power plants or photovoltaic cells. Energy absorbed by the Earth. Not all the solar energy that reach the Earth atmosphere is absorbed by Earth. This is due to something known as the Earth Earth energy budget. This budget accounts for the fact that some of the energy incident outer atmosphere of the planet is immediately reflected back into space. Due to reflection by the atmosphere, clouds and Earth's surface, we can approximate that 70% of the solar energy incident on the edge of the Earth's atmosphere is actually absorbed by the Earth. Energy that's absorbed by the Earth is not the same as the energy incident to the Earth's surface. On a perfectly clear or cloudless day, when the sun is directly over your head, or the zenith, solar irradiation is still reduced due to the absorption, about 16%, and reflection, 6%, by particles in Earth's atmosphere. These particles include carbon dioxide, oxygen, ozone, and water vapor. Our planet has a curved surface, resulting in the sun's parallel rays having difference in the angle where they meet the atmosphere depending on latitude. That results in the uneven distribution of solar radiation and heating. Where the sun rays form a 90 degree angle of the atmosphere, it's called the subsolar point, the amount of energy received is directly related to the sun's rays angle maximum at 9 degrees and more diffuse and it's less than that become more pronounced close to the poles during the year the subsolar point travels from 23.5 degrees south to 23.5 degrees north called the tropical region this region receives 2.5 times more solar energy than the polar regions let's look for at how much of that energy reached the top of the atmosphere per unit area, approximate 480 kilometers from Earth and the mean distance from the Sun. This value is about 1366 via square square meter and is called the solar constant. This value is not really a constant but changes slightly during the year and also during the 11 year sunspot cycle. That value is calculated using an imaginary surface perpendicular to the sun's ray with the same Earth's diameter. Let's talk about seasons. The passing of a year can bring a marked change in the weather and the surrounding environment. The four seasons winter, spring, summer, autumn, can vary slightly in characteristic and can prompt changes in the world around them. Let's take an overview of these four separate periods. Many people believe that Earth is close to the Sun in the summer, and that's why it is hotter. And likewise, they think Earth is farthest from the Sun in the winter. Hmm, think about that. Although this idea makes sense, it's incorrect. Ah, surprise. It's true that Earth's orbit is not a perfect circle and is a bit of loop-sided. During part of the year, Earth is close to the Sun than other times. However, in the Northern Hemisphere, we are having winter when Earth is close to the Sun and summer when the it's farthest away. Again. Comparing how far away the Sun it is, the change in Earth's distance through the year. There are five different reasons for Earth's seasons. 
revolution, rotation, tilt of earth axis, axial parallelism and spherism. Let's go first one, revolution. So, so far we have discussed the importance of earth rotation on this axis. But what about the earth movement at or the sun? We refer to the motion as the earth revolution around the sun. The earth takes 365.42 days to travel around the sun, almost a quarter of a day longer than the calendar year of 365 days. So every four years this time adds up to nearly one extra day, which you account for by inserting a 29th day in February in leap years. So further minor corrections such as omitting the extra day in century years are necessary to keep the calendar on track. Next one is tilt of Earth axis. So depends on you where you live in the world, the effect of the change seasons can be large. But why do you experience the seasons on Earth? And why do the hours of daylight change through the year, mostly extreme at the poles? unless so near to the equator. Seasons arise because the Earth axis is not perpendicular to the plane of the ecliptic. So what happened is the Sun, which is known as the plane of the eclipse, as I mentioned to you guys, uh, is interactive with the Earth. So we, we tend to imaginary axis out of this North Pole into space. It always aims toward Polaris, the North Star. The direction of the axis does not change as the Earth revolves around the Sun. So let's investigate this phenomenon in more detail. So axial parallelism refers to the fact that the axis remains parallel to this previous position as the Earth revolves around the Sun. That means that the Earth axis always, always points in the same direction. We have discussed how much solar energy changes at Earth's surface based on latitude, and because the spherical shape, the planet curvature creates an angle between the parallel sun rays and any given place on Earth, resulting that natural radiation varies between tropical and polar regions. Different latitudes receive different amount of energy on the same day. Combining all the five factors results in an uneven distribution of solar energy year around. The equinox, vernal and autumnal. There are two times in the year where the Earth axis is tilted neither toward nor away from the Sun, resulting in a nearly equal amount of daylight and darkness at all latitudes. These events are referred to as equinoxes. The word equinox do you know that? Is derived from two Latin words, equus, equal, and nox, night. At the equator, the sun is directly overhead at noon at those two equinox. The nearly equal hours of day and night is due to refraction of sunlight or a bending of the light's rays that cause the sun to appear above the horizon when the actual point of the sun is below the horizon. The solstice, summer and winter, so, in the summer solstice occurs at the moment the Earth tilts toward from the Sun, it's at the maximum. Therefore, on the day of the summer solstice, the Sun appears at its highest elevation with a noontime position that changes very little for several days before and after the summer solstice. The summer solstice occurs when the Sun is directly over the tropical of the Cancer, which is located at 23.5 degrees latitude north and runs through Mexico, the Bahamas, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, India and southern China. For every place north of the Tropic of the Cancer, the sun at the highest point in the sky. The winter solstice marks the shortest day and longest night of the year. In the northern hemisphere, it occurs when the sun is directly over the Tropic of the Capricorn which is located at 23.5 degrees south of the equator and runs through Australia, Chile, southern Brazil and northern South Africa.